Hi, this video is about the remaining two modes on the Z80 PIO. If you have not watched the first part, you should view the first one before you continue. You can find the link in the description or the info box. So let's dive into the bi-directional mode. But before I want to do a quick review of what we have already seen, you can put port A in input or output, where all of your eight lines are either configured for input or output. In both modes, the handshaking lines ready and strobe are used. This is the same for port B. The bi-directional mode does only work on port A. Bi-directional mode means that the port can function as input and as output at the same time. The control of the direction is done over the strobe and ready lines. A ready and A strobe are used for output, and B ready and B strobe of port B are used for input. That's why we have to put port B in bit control mode. The control mode, as we will see later, does not use any hardware handshaking lines. Let's have a look at the circuit diagram of the bidirectional mode. So when the CPU has sent data to the PIO, with the next falling edge of the clock signal, the PIO will set its ready line to 1. So now the peripheral knows that there is data available. But only after the peripheral has set its strobe line to 0, the PIO will set its uh, port in output mode, not before only after the strobe sign is low. That's the difference between um, this mode and the standard output mode. In the standard output mode the PIO already sets uh, the output value. Here it's only done after the peripheral has set its strobe line to zero. When the peripheral has finished reading it will set its strobe line to high and it will initiate, if enabled on the PIO, an interrupt. And after the next falling edge of the clock signal, the PIO will set its uh, ready line to zero. The peripheral will only send data when the ready line, the B ready line, of the PIO is high. The peripheral will set its B strobe line to zero and only if the B-strobe line is zero, the peripheral will put its um, port in output mode. In that time, the PIO will read the data, and when the peripheral, um, with the rising edge of the peripheral, an interrupt, also an interrupt, can be generated if it's enabled on the PIO, and with the next falling edge of the clock, um, the ready line uh, goes low again. And the ready line stays low until the CPU has uh, read the data on the PIO. To put the PIO in bidirectional mode, it's almost the same as we did with the modes before. So bidirection is 2, in binary it's 1 and 0, so you have to load A and send it to the control channel. 82, because 82 is the control channel of port A in the uh, microprocessor one. So if you want to put um, channel B in bit control mode, bit control is 3, that's in binary 1-1, one, one. so 8 and 4 is 12, that's in hexadecimal C and send it to control port B. 83, because that's the control channel of port B. What is bit control mode? In bit control mode you can program individually every line as input or output. 0 stands for output and 1 stands for input. For example here, D0 and D1 are programmed as output and the rest as input. 
So, the byte you have to send to the control channel is FC. That means after you have configured a port in bit control mode, you must send another byte to the same control port, where you specify the input or output mask. To send a value, you do it like in the output mode, write it to the data channel. In this case, D1 of port B is 1, and the rest of the port is 0. 81, because 81 is the data channel of port B. And reading is also done over the data channel, but here we want to mask out the output ports, so in our case D0 and D1. With the AND we filter out D0 and D1. What about interrupts? In the previous video I have explained how to program the interrupt. This command is used for loading the interrupt vector and this one to enable it. It works fine for output, input and bidirectional mode. But for the bit control mode you should use this instruction. It's almost the same command but when D2 is 1, D4, D5 and D6 are no longer in yacht but have a special meaning. Let's have a more in-depth look at these three bits. So at D5 you see high and low. That means if D5 is 1, an interrupt is only generated when all the signals go high. And if the flag is 0, an interrupt is generated when all the signals go low. When I mean all, that depends on the flag D6 and and or. If you want to end them, then you have to set 1. That means all bits, all is here in italic, you will see uh, shortly why. And if it's 0, you, you set it to all. This means at least one of the bits should be, in this case, uh, 1. Or low if you set D5 to 0. With D4 you specify if you mean really all the bits, or you want to mask out only several bits. So 0 means no mask, every bit's involved, and if you put 1, a mask follows. If you set this flag to 1, you have to send another byte to the control channel. And in this byte, 0 means monitor the bit, and 1 means mask the bit. Ignore it. So, example, interrupt should only be generated when MB0 and MB7 are both 1. So, you have to enable the interrupt. That's um, in D7, 1, so that's 8. You want to do an AND, that's 4, 8 and 4 is 12. Uh, the value should be 1, that's high, so add 2, it's 14. And you want to specify a mask, that's D4, 1. That's why there's an F, and the command is 7. So you have to send F7 to the control port. And of course you have to specify your mask. So MB6, 5, MB4 should be masked. So that's 1, 2, 3 and 4 is 7. So on the lower bits only MB0 should be uh, monitored. MB1 is 2, MB2 is 4, that's 6. And MB3 is um, 8, 8 and 6 is 14, that's E. So you have to send um, 7E to the program port to mask the bits. If you put channel A in bi-directional mode, 
and be in bit control mode, channel A will also use the interrupt of channel B, which means both interrupts are shared. So, for example, port A is in bidirectional and port B in bit control mode, but you want to use only the interrupt from port B as input for port A and not for the bit control mode, you have to disable the pins in bit control mode. So let's enable uh, the interrupt and specify a mask. And the mask is FF because you want to ignore all the bits in control mode. In this case, the interrupt of channel B is only initiated if port A is receiving data. So this is our microprocessor board 1, our Arduino. I have connected here, I'm not sure if you can see this. So only four pins here. The first two here are the ready lines. So B ready, A ready and B strobe, A strobe. And I have used um, two um, data lines, only two data lines, PA0 and PA1. So this one is um, the ground. And here for channel B, I've used uh, only four, four pins, PB, PB0, PB1. These are configured for output mode and the rest is configured for input mode. I would say let's fire it up. So the program is launched and also the program on the computer is launched. The program uh, is connected over the serial port on the Arduino and the switches here are connected to port A and port A is in bi-directional mode. So the program here will send the value. If I hit here the switch, you see here this goes down and hit it again, this goes up. The same for the second switch. But I can also control the switch on the keyboard here. So this one, this will use um, also port A, which is in bi-direction mode, but will send the data. Down and four for up. One for down, second switch, and off, five to turn it off. If I hit two here, it will initiate gauge one, and I programmed it as toggle switch. And this is not sent over the port A, but over port B, which is in bit control mode, and this one is uh, data zero. And this one is data one. And the two buttons here will use um, data two and data three. So um, this is not rocket science. Uh, let me show what it does in in terminal mode. So let me connect it and uh, if I hit here for example 0, that's switch 1, it will send a 2. If I hit 4, it will send a 0. If I hit 1 here, it will initiate the second switch. 5, it turns it off. 2, I mean 4 here, will send a 4. 2 will send a 4 and it initiates gauge 1. If I hit 4 again, gauges will go back. If I hit 3 here, gauges 2 is initiated. If I hit 3, gauges goes back. So let me take the keyboard. 
if I hit one here. Okay, let me just uh, set a local echo on the terminal. So one. So one will turn the switch on, two will turn the second switch on, and I hit, I hit, and if I hit three, both switches are on, if I hit zero, all switches are off. If I hit six, that's a sound, if I hit seven, that's another sound. That's it. So let's go back to the source code. So here's the source code. Um, I've already explained these values in the previous video. This one is new. That's a bidirectional mode. M2 and M3 for control mode. Then I have two system functions uh, which will play a 1 kHz tone here and a 2 kHz tone. I've defined three variables um, for the state of switches, indicators, um, actually the gauges, and the state of tones. And, and this is the main program, loading the upper eight bits of the interrupt vector, setting the interrupt vector here, um, and setting the CPU to interrupt mode to enable interrupt. Here I will program channel A as bidirectional mode. Set setting interrupt vector for A and enable uh, interrupt for port A. Here's channel B, setting it to bit control mode and um, setting D0 until D1 as output and the rest as input, setting interrupt vector for B, enable interrupt and also setting uh, mask pins. So I want to mask all the bits, so the interrupt is not uh, initiated um, with the control bit mode. And here's a workaround, um, so if you configure a port in input mode or, or bidirectional mode. You should, uh, you should read the first time uh, the value, otherwise the uh, uh, value may stuck in and um, the PIO won't set the ready uh, pin too high. Yes, initialization of a variable, or the switch variable, loading the video memory and in HL that's the state of switches and IY the state of the gauges. So here I'm reading the data of channel B, masking out D0 and D1, which are actually the output ports. And here I'm calling um, a check tone, check if a tone is sent. But uh, we will skip this first. Um, and here's still a an, an jump. Uh, I had um, other code here. And to remove that, uh, but I didn't want to mess around with the move function in the microprofessor one, or retype it. That's why there's still a, a jump here. So in the former video, I used the scan function, which uh, displayed um, the values of uh, the LCD buffer, and uh, waiting for key. But I can't use that function here, because um, here I can't rely uh, on the interrupts, because I, I have turned off for the channel B, the control bit, I have turned off the interrupt. The interrupt works, but I will use it only for, for the bidirectional mode of port A. So here I have to use the scan1 function. This will display um, the value of the LCDs for about 10 milliseconds and checking if a key is pressed. If no key is pressed, so the chaos flag is set if no key is pressed. So we will jump back to the loop. 
and check again if um, the value has uh, and read the value again from channel B. So if a key is uh, pressed, the values uh, which the scan one function returns differ from um, the scan function. So with a normal scan function, if you press zero, it will return zero. If you press one, it will return one, two, two, three, three, and so on. But with the scan one function, if you press zero, it will return 12 hexadecimal. If you press one, it will return C, two, it will return six, three, it will return zero, and so on. So if you press the zero, you have to compare it with the hex value 13. And that means switch one has, uh, you turned off switch one. So I will uh, mask out the value of switch one. So switch one has the value of, of two and switch two has the value of one. So I will do an AND only with one. So switch two will be zero. HL is the safe state of uh, switches, and I will send the result. If you pressed uh, 1, that means uh, switch to, 2 uh, is turned off. So I will do an AND with 2. And if you pressed 4, switch 1 is turned on. So I will do an, an OR with 2. And if you pressed uh, 5, that means switch 2 is on, I will do an OR with 1 to turn on the switch 2. Okay, I'll um, we'll check, uh, we'll explain it a little later. Let's go to the send function. Okay, sending accumulator to data channel A and saving the new state and calling the LCD print function. The LCD print. So saving the state. I will check if um, the key is um, on or off. So first switch, doing an AND here. So if it's um, not set, it means zero. The value is zero 08. So if the switch is turned off, the A segment should light up. So everything is zero except for A. A is here. It's one, two, four, eight. So the value is zero, eight. And if uh, the switch is set, the value is eight, zero. So if the switch is turned on, the D segment should be on here and the rest zero. So D here is eight, eight and the rest zero, eight, zero. Then setting, writing uh, the value to the LCD screen. That's the first digit from the left. And checking the second switch. The value for the second switch is 1. Checking if it's set. If not, it's actually the same as above. I, had, I could do an, uh, an, a loop here, but uh, just for two digits, this, um, it's too, it makes no sense. And after that, uh, it will return back. So after the LCD print, it will wait until the key is released. And it will go back to the loop function. So if you pressed um, 2, which means uh, the turned the indicator on, Or off. So here is for indicator 1 and I'm doing here an exclusive OR which means I will invert uh, the value and sending result to channel B and saving it back to memory. Now I check here if it's on or off. So if it's um, off, I mean when it's 0, it will go here and uh, zero 05 is for off. Gauge is off means F and E 
uh, should be 1 and the rest 0. E is 1 and F is 4, 4 and 1 is 5. So 0, 5. Otherwise 3, 0 is 4 ohm. If the gauge is on, B and C should be 1 and the rest 0. So B and C, that's 1 and 2 is 3, 3, 0. And writing the value to the LCD, that's a false position. For indicator 1 and doing a, a wait for the release key and check for is the same but for indicator 2. Doing the th same thing, uh, it's just another position here. So what's left? Um, let's go back here to the main loop. So reading uh, the value of B and masking it out. So here's the check tone. So the check tone function. So saving the value to B and um, comparing it with the saved value. If there's no difference, so if it's zero, it will return. It will do nothing. Otherwise, it will check if 4 was sent, and um, if 4 was sent, it will do an invert. And if it's um, not 0, it will um, play the 1 kilohertz tone. Otherwise, it will play the 2 kilohertz tone. Okay. Playing one kilohertz tone, yeah, just uh, saving a bunch of registers, calling the period and uh, setting the period and calling the tone function. Tone one kilohertz and the same function just with tone two. And what's left? Yeah, uh, that's the same as in the previous video. You have output uh, mode interrupt function. I uh, will just print again uh, the value and for the input mode here I will read the value from channel A and save it. Um, yeah, here I have to use um, really the value of, of, of the variable. I can't use HL because um, the scan1 function will um, swap HL with the EXX um, instruction. And yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.